Hello everyone and welcome to another Hasselbad webinar. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mark Whitney, Hasselbad European Events Manager. And today's webinar will be about the Hasselbad X1D camera, uh, featuring an interview with Hasselbad Masters winner, Ali Rahabi, who uses the X1D for his urban photography work. Just to say before we get started, we get a lot of questions normally about whether the webinar will be available as a recording afterwards. So yes, it will. We are currently recording this and it will be posted to the Hasselblad YouTube page um, probably tomorrow morning or within a few hours of the webinar finishing. Uh, so please check there and you can check back on all our other previous webinars as well over the past few months. A quick agenda for today's webinar. So we're going to have a quick introduction to our webinar partners. Uh, brought to you today um, in association with Golf Photo Plus and Advanced Media. We will then have a quick look at the Hasselblad X1D system, a bit of a uh, top level look at the, the system, the specifications, the lens lineup and some of the advantages of using the system. And then we'll have a chat with Ali Rahabi about his work and how he uses the X1D uh, for his work. So we're estimating this will be about 50 minutes, uh, give or take, and hopefully we'll have some time at the end for some Q&A. So you can use the GoToWebinar um, control panel app um, where there's a questions uh, panel and you can type your questions in there and we'll try and get them into the conversation with Ali or if not, try and answer them at the end and apologies if we don't get time to answer all the questions. So as I say, today's webinar is in association with Golf Photo Plus and Advanced Media, uh, two of our partners from the Dubai region. So uh, we've got Mohammed joining us today from Golf Photo Plus. So hi, Mohammed. Hi, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm excited to uh, see where you're all uh, joining us from. I'm based here in Dubai and, um, uh, you know, Gulf Photo Plus, a lot of you may know, uh, is a center for photography based here in Dubai. We, you know, our footprint extends to beyond Dubai to, you know, to cover the Gulf and uh, North Africa and also the Levant region. Uh, many of you may have heard of us for one, uh, some of our annual events that we, we, we run annually in, in our winter or, um, or it's more like our spring, but your, you know, your winter um, in February and March. And um, we host some of the world's top photographers to come and do uh, lots of seminars and conferences and talks. And um, we have an exciting event uh, that's a shootout, which you should check out on the, on the website. Um, and, you know, we, we are a, a Outside of the event, we have a space here in Dubai at the Al Surkal Avenue, which is a gallery space. Um, we host a lot of artist talks, um, uh, exhibitions, uh, program, you know, different kinds of programming throughout the year. And we really want to be a, a platform for photographers in the region and beyond to show their work and um, and also be a resource for photographers. And that's why we have a printing lab, um, a, a really nice gallery space, which is modular. And we uh, are doing an event, for example, this coming weekend, which is a market day where people can come in and sell some of their used gear and, you know, other people can pick up some great bargains. So we really are a, a photography community that's rooted here in Dubai, but, you know, serve a wider region in the Gulf. And we're delighted to partner with um, Hassan and advanced media one of the things that we're keen on is helping um, our community learn how they can make the best of uh, equipment that's out there to improve their photography whether it's street photography art photography documentary and you know Hasselblad of course um, uh, I'm a very proud 501 CM user with a with an old digital back and um, I've been you know excited to try this uh, baby out that we're going to talk about and um, uh, I hope they forget to pick it up from me um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, um, it, you know, it's a wonderful um, a piece of gear, but also what it can do. And I'm, I'm excited to hear what Ali has to say and share with us and how you can use it um, to make uh, some amazing uh, pictures and some lovely work. So um, yeah, uh, excited to, uh, as many of you are, to see um, what Ali's going to share with us and how we can um, take advantage of this uh, beautiful piece of kit. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. That's a great introduction. And uh, yeah, and thank for uh, supporting the webinar. Uh, so you're Thank going to you. stick around and you'll be around uh, for, for questions later on in the uh, webinar. So feel free to, to direct any questions towards Mohammed. And also we've got Timothy from Advanced Media uh, with us today. So hi, Timothy. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi. my name is Tim. I'm working as one of the salesperson in the photography department. So, so um, Advanced Media, we founded in 2004. 2002, Advanced Media is a trading, is the Middle East largest supplier of broadcast, cinema, professional video and photography equipment and accessories. Our company is headquartered in Dubai with a branch in Riyadh, Saudi, KSA. Advanced Media is hassled by distributor for mentioned countries. We offer sales, training, hands-on workshops, 
service and warranty for Asselwood products. And we're thanking all of you for joining our webinar today. Great, thank you, Timothy. And um, we've got uh, an image there of your showroom and uh, you offer X1D demos for people that come to your store, is that right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, so thanks to Advanced Media and um, let's get on with today's uh, content. So let's have a look at the X1D, just the top level, uh, become uh, familiar with the product. So um, as you may or may not know, we launched the, the first version of the X1D in around June 2016. And it, uh, it features a 50 megapixel CMOS sensor in a small, lightweight and portable body. And at the time, it was the first of its kind, the first uh, digital medium format mirrorless camera. Uh, we then followed that up um, in June last year with the Mark II version, uh, using the same sensor in a familiar uh, body shape, uh, but some big differences. Um, new electronic platform. Um, it's got a larger rear display, a higher res viewfinder, and also support for UHS-2 SD cards among the, the changes. So just um, a quick look at the specification. So as I said, the 50 megapixel medium format, um, cropped medium format sensor, only 650 grams in weight. So it makes it uh, medium format more portable than what it's ever been before. Uh, a 3.6 inch rear touch screen with a really intuitive uh, touch screen, uh, very similar to a smartphone how it works in its operation. Um, a 3.6 million uh, pixel OLED electronic viewfinder uh, for being able to, uh, to see the images and uh, with exposure simulation. Uh, we've got Wi-Fi support, uh, USB-C and built-in GPS. And the Wi-Fi support enables us to shoot tethered direct to a iPad and to an iPhone with Focus Mobile 2, uh, which is quite a unique part of the system. And also we've got Hassle, Hasselbad's natural color solution. So we get a 16 bit uh, color uh, space from the, the raw images and Hasselblad um, are able to produce very natural and uh, very wide uh, depth of colors um, that are very accurate and um, a, a great starting place for, for, for them to edit your images. So the XCD lens lineup, um, we've got the widest lens of a 21 millimeter and the longest being a 135. We also do a converter for the 135, a 1.7 converter. Uh, we've got one zoom lens, uh, the fastest lens being the XCD80 at uh, f1.9. Um, yeah, so a good selection and the, um, the system is uh, continuing to build. Uh, but we can also go uh, beyond XCD lenses, and there's also support for H series lenses. So if you're an H platform existing owner with H lenses, uh, you can uh, use the adapter there to use all your H lenses on the X1D. Uh, the same also for V lenses, um, so a V adapter, and we even have an adapter there for the X pan lenses as well. Uh, so lots of variety and flexibility in the system. So just a quick look at the advantages. So the, the obviously the, the sensor being around about 70% bigger than a full frame 35 millimeter sensor is one of the biggest advantages. And obviously the, the photo sites or the pixels are actually bigger as a result of that. We're getting around about 14 and a half stops of dynamic range. So you can really pull in the detail from your shadows and highlights. Um, the 16 bit color that I mentioned previously. All our lenses have leaf shutters. Um, so that's really good. If you use flash, you can flash sync up to two thousandth of a second and really kill that ambient light and turn sort of daylight into nighttime, which is a, a strong uh, benefit. And then, as I said before, Focus Mobile 2 um, offering portable workflow so you can shoot direct um, tethered to a iPad and edit remotely. So let's um, bring in Ali now uh, from New York. Uh, so hi, Ali. Are you there? Hey. Uh, ha. Hello, Mark. How's it going? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Thank you so much. Let me say hello to everyone in this uh, tough times that we are facing in the world. So I hope everyone is safe and healthy. And uh, I'm here at your service. So let's let's go and talk. OK, yeah. So um, let's uh, introduce you first. So um, you like to be known as an urban photographer. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, although I'm not a fan of labels, 
So um, urban photographer, fine art photographer, street photographer, anything you want, you can call me. It's it's not a big deal. So <laughs> okay. I'm just I'm just a person with a camera that want to express what is inside my brain, heart, and my yeah. vision to the audiences. So the media that I'm using right now is uh, the platform that I'm using is uh, photography. So to yeah. express um, and exploring the world of uh, I mean, it's kind of a big curiosity. Yeah, it's it's an adventure, adventurous ride for me to express myself. Yes. So okay, it's up to so, you. Urban yeah. fine art. Yeah, anything you want. <laughs> okay. So um, you started your photographic sort of journey in in two thousand and one. Yes, I started. It's interesting because I started with the teaching of Photoshop. I was, I was and um, and after that, I um, added the photography. Um, and the the main reason that I jumped in. Let me let me tell you one thing which is very important because uh, I grew up, uh, I, I remember when I was five years old, uh, my father uh, bought, we, we are two brothers, um, right. and yes, just two brothers, and uh, bought us some um, game console, Atari on that time, and then um, video came in, uh, I mean, a video tapes, I mean, VHS system on that time, there was no DVD yeah. or CD on that. And I grew up with cinema and gaming, and um, um, so uh, my journey in the visual world starts when I, since I was five years old. But when I was 20 years old, when I um, I started teaching, um, and then one of the main reason um, um, it was not my, um, it was, I don't want to say that it was a um, coincidence, but um, I, I wanted to explore the photography, the world of photography. I, I knew lots of things about uh, um, working with the cameras, but because I had so many photography students, they asked so many questions. And then I started to uh, work practically with, with the camera. And right. then uh, everything changed. So uh, yes, everything changed. <laughs> and I started my journey in the photography world uh, four, three or four years after I was teaching Photoshop. Yes. Okay. And, and we're just showing. Yeah, it was like 2004, 2005. Oh, okay. Like 15, 15, 16 years ago. Okay. We're just uh, showing some of your sort of portfolio images, so to speak, uh, just to give people an idea of the sort of things you shoot. Uh, what yes. Uh, so the, the point is for me right now, so I'm, I'm using the streets as a studio uh, to, to, uh, sh um, to show what what I'm thinking about and what is important for me, uh, because I believe that um, human mankind, humankind, is one of the most important subjects that we can uh, um, talk about. We can. It's all about. I know the way I'm talking right now. I mean, the world that we are living right now is a little complicated. So I don't want to stick to exact words, but but people, I mean, showing the people in everyday life in, in, in not traditional way of photography, street photography, is one of my concerns these days. Yes. So on different, different pictures in different times, um, different seasons, night, day, and uh, the con different concepts that um, I really like to show to the viewer. But but they are but this one is a little different. Uh, so it's it's about the um, uh, a project that I started in 2009. 2009, if I'm not wrong, uh, there's a very um, beautiful desert in the middle of Iran called Lut Shatta. Uh, and uh, I um, when I wanted to start this project, uh, it was interesting because it happened in a fall. I went there, and when I came out of my tent, um, I don't know what happened based on science, but um, it was the desert was totally in dark. So uh, I think it was the effect of clouds and the moons, because uh, the clouds covered the sky, but they were moving. So all of a sudden, after one or two minutes that I came out of my tent, so I saw a rock on the horizon, so it turned on in three or four seconds and it turned off. 
it was like a lamp you turn it on and turn it off yeah so first i thought it was a hallucination but but it repeated uh, and i decided to portrait that night in a project called the land of silence which i'm still uh working on it yeah this is this is from that project so it's different from the streets ones okay and then your um, um, your association yeah. Passelblad comes as a result of of this image really this is what uh, you won yes this is the, <laughs> in 2016 yes in 2016 i won the category of urban street photography uh of the masters competition which um was a new beginning point for me. I mean, cooperating with Hasselblad was um, it was like a game changer for me in my professional life as a photographer. And yes, this is this is the snowy New York. Uh, it was a tough day because this picture reminds me of those tough days that I had deal with uh, an intestine problem which was so harsh on that time. It was in two, uh, January 2014, which uh, on, a, on that time I was living in New York, uh, but, but the illness forced me back to come to Iran. Uh, and I had three surgeries on that time. Uh, but this picture, I took it, it was two days ago, two, I'm sorry, two, not, two, not two days ago, two days before my flight, two days before my flight to Iran. Um, I didn't want to miss the chance because at that time, I thought that maybe my days are over in New York City, in the United States. So I didn't want to miss the chance. Um, I uh, used three or four pills, I mean, and jumped into the middle of the street to taking pictures. And this happened. Um, I took maybe two or three shots, three shots of the scene. I still remember the, uh, Taxi's horn in the back, and for everyone <laughs> to know, it's the Sixth Avenue, up Forty Second, Bryant Park. So, if you want to know the place, the actual places, yes, and uh, yeah, it led me to. Uh, this is one of those pictures that changed my life. Okay, so this is now the the images you took for the Masters book that year, two thousand sixteen. Uh, so the yes, uh, the. For everyone who is not familiar with the master's project, when you win the Hasselblad title, the master's title, uh, there's a long journey still for me to become a master. So I want to mention that. Uh, but as a professional photographer, yes. So uh, when I won the title, mm, there was an assignment from the Hasselblad for, for producing the book, master's book. So every winner should do yeah. A series of projects, series of images uh, for the book. So mine was, and the theme on that year was Inspire. Yep. And even being in New York City inspires you. Uh, and the word inspire is very general because you can do whatever you want to do. But for me, it came uh, from my one of my father's advices when I was a teenage boy that told me God split his blessing in the early morning. Then, so I thought, this is it. So the, the inspiration exists um, within our everyday life in, in this span of time. And every time that uh, sun rises, so there's a new, there's a fresh start for everyone. So I started to take the pictures in the early morning and, um, the, and, the, and the pictures that you're seeing right now is the result of that project. But there's one thing which, is, which I want to talk about. Uh, when you're working with Hasselblad cameras, on that time, we still didn't have the X1D system. So I used the H5D. So the pictures that yeah. you're seeing, right, which is a huge camera, so which is not, yeah. I mean, it's not a typical camera for taking street pictures. So these pictures, um, b because sometimes people ask me that if these pictures are a stage, and I'm saying, no, they're not. They are the result of patience and control. So it's very important. It was very important for me uh, to know the spots. So I started scouting, calculating the lights, even calculating the steps of the people, because 
Hasselblad is not allowing you to go for a motor drive, continuous drive, like 10 frames per second, eight frames per second. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to capture the people um, in the best forms. So I started calculating the steps. And um, because there was no cast, so I had to be very uh, uh, patient. Well, we've we actually had a question uh, sort of on this topic ready from Constantine. So he's asking what percentage of your images are spontaneous or candid versus planned or staged? So are they almost 100% uh, spontaneous or? The image that you are seeing right now is 100% spontaneous. Yeah. But let me tell you one thing, because the photography, uh, when you want to do a project, uh, it started many, many days or months ago. For me, we had only four months to f finish the project. So I was thinking yeah. that, so because, uh, Mark, there's two words, and I love to talk about them, which is very important for the photographers to dig into and, and, and think about it. It's subconscious and conscious. Yeah. As a photographer, as an artist, so these two words is very important because the pictures that you are making uh, is the result of both. Sometimes it comes from your subconscious, but, but sometimes you know what you're doing. And for me, uh, it was a, a transfer from these two words together. So, so sometimes when you start in your early stages as a photographer, so your subconscious plays a role. But mm -hmm. after a while, when you, when you discover yourself, which is, which, which is all about, because as a photographer, as an artist, you need to discover yourself. You need, you need to discover the world around you. Then every, everything, uh, uh, but then everything that you see is, in a, um, is visible. It's, it, it's your vision. You know that. You know what you're doing, which we use the word conscious for that. So uh, yes, in these pictures, yeah, they are they are spontaneous, but I knew that I wanted to uh, tag them, and I had to be patient because um, I wanted this. Uh, I can say ninety percent because nothing is hundred percent. You <laughs> sometimes yes, nothing is nothing is a uh, hundred percent, and uh, nothing is absolute. It's always relative. Um, but I try to have this percentage more than 80% to know what I'm doing, what, 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 is, what is the story behind the pictures. And sometimes you need to be lucky if you want to use the word of luck, uh, but it's not in my dictionary. I'm, I'm saying that you should make your own chances. Yeah. And you are the person who make your own chances. These are the yeah. pictures. It's, it, it's interesting. You, for, the, for these type of projects or for your very serious projects um, you you don't you don't take your camera with you and just go outside and just shoot it doesn't work like that if you want to be a stroller if you want to go out and just walk and take pictures that's okay i'm sometimes i'm doing this and you you should be open to what is in front of you and it's all related to your knowledge to your vision and you take pictures uh, which they are very good they are fantastic they speak to the viewer and and you play as a stroller but these these pictures uh, are not amongst them yes okay. so is this and one this of is, your favorite is this one of your favorite this images? is, this is one of mine <laughs> yes <laughs> this is the picture that led to a big cooperation with Hasselblad and IKEA Yes, that's it. Yeah, published in 2018 worldwide in uh, at IKEA stores all around the world in all of yep. their branches. And uh, when you see the picture, it's everyday life. But um, um, when I wanted to take the, the picture, I read it like 30, 35 minutes. And, and I wanted to add this um, mark, which is very important. It doesn't matter that you wait one hour 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, it, it doesn't give the quality in, into the picture. It doesn't give, so it doesn't mean that if you waited two hours, you could take a better picture. That, no. That's what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. 
So maybe, but for me, in the scene, because it was exactly behind the street lamps, um, so there were lots of cars in front of me, so I had to wait for them to move and pass. And yeah. I was lucky because the lady came into the scene from the right side of the picture, and uh, the waitress was over there. Yeah, so, and it's, it's the New York City's picture in the early morning. Yes. And we've got a sort of a, a, a zoomed in crop. Um, you want uh, to yes, as we can see the quality of the picture, so it speaks for itself, uh, which is very important for me. It doesn't matter. This uh, X5D is a 50 megapixel camera like the uh, X1D. Yeah. And with a 14, um, um, I mean, 14 step, uh, stops of dynamic range and 16 bits of color depth. So it allowed me to play in every pixel, every detail, which I'm so grateful, uh, Mark, when, when I was working with Hasselblad, I had this um, opportunity to, to play with the pixels. But at the same time, as a photographer, uh, you should calculate every step that you want to take. Mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't think that, okay, this is a 50 megapixel of camera with 14, stop of, 14 stops of dynamic range and uh, there are lots of information in the image. So I will take the picture and, and I will do the post-processing. No, this is not the way that, I, that we should think mm. as a photographer. So everything is planned. Uh, we know based on your knowledge, based on your experience, based on your concept. So, yes. Um, this image, um, specifically this image, um, there's this, because when I was walking on the streets, I was looking for the signs and the words because I wanted to add them into the project, which is kind of inspiring. Uh, if you look at the right side of the picture, and before I explain more, Mark, it's not usual for a photographer to speak about pictures because it's the viewer's <laughs> yeah. opinion. Uh, it's, it's about the viewer who read a photograph yep. based on their perspective, based on their knowledge, based on their taste, their feelings, if they can connect with a picture or not. So usually I don't like to talk about my pictures. But in this particular image on the right side, you can see four words, which is pain, regret, courage, and rise. The theme was inspired for me. So when I saw the words, it was a kiosk selling hot dogs. I mean, I, I'm sure everyone missed eating hot dogs in the streets of New York. I'm not sure everyone, but most of the people. So. It was interesting because when I was looking at it, at the words, it was like um, uh, all of us have pain in our life. There are some regretful moments in our life, but we should all have the courage to rise, especially in these days. We should rise again. Um, yeah, this picture, all I can say is um, like 70% on the question that one of our, the, our audiences asked. So yes, um, it, it, it was 60% spontaneous and 40% planned because yeah, that, that kiosk was, was not in the place on that time that I was visiting the streets. So it came in and then I started and, and took the picture. Cool. So we've got a question from Victoria. How much post-processing do you do in your images? Um, my image, let me tell you this, my images, are always unfinished in the camera. Mm. Uh, they are always waiting for another action. Yeah. And uh, yes, it depends on the project, but post-processing is always part of my um, journey as a photographer. It's part of my workspace. But the, but the point is, which is very important that we have to think about it, is um, I know what will happen in the pictures before I take them. These are not random editing. These are not random post-processing. And um, you can gain the knowledge you can buy, uh, by many sources and then experience will help you to do it better and better. 
Uh, Mark, tools are, they, they are at our service. We use the tools to show what we think, what is our concept, how we see the world around us. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, and it's very important for us sometimes. Tools plays a very important role, which I have to admit. But it doesn't mean that if you don't have the right tools at the moment, you cannot achieve the good and best results. Hmm. You can raise the bar by good tools. That's the point. Yeah, it's important not to let the tools limit you, I guess. Yes, yes. So it's all about the photographer who is behind the camera. It's all about the person uh, which um, click the shutter. So that's that's important for, for everyone who think uh, to be a photographer. And this is the Times Square. So you know what? In, in one point, Mark, taking pictures of New York City is very hard. You know why? Because it's the most photographed city in the world. Yeah. So when you want to take pictures of a spot like Times Square, <clears throat> I'm sorry. So it's not that easy because it is a place that everybody see that place every day. So then it's it's hard for you to because sometimes people taking pictures in New York City is easy. You go around and take pictures. So that's everybody do. So how you can stand out, how you can take a picture. I'm not saying that I'm standing out. This is this is people's opinion, but uh, I tried to do that. So and 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 you can see I played with the people, uh, the mood, and it's interesting because some people ask me that what was the nighttime that you take the picture, <laughs> which it was not. So the light is a little tricky on the scene, and the text. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and 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 you look at here. Um, it's interesting because uh, for the picture. For this picture, I followed the guy for like, I don't know, 100, 150 meters to see if he can fit in the frame. Yeah, it was a little hard. And if you see the uh, steps, I had to walk faster because I had to prepare. I had to be prepared when he wants to join, I mean, come into the scene when I'm going to take the pictures. And maybe the audience have this question that how did you take this atmosphere with the light and brightness. It's mm. all about playing with the brightness, with, and I played with the shutter speed and the f-stop, nothing more. So if I, if for, for this is particular image, if I want to say how much is the post-processing, how much is it the real picture, I can say 80 to 20. 80% 80 of this image uh, is from the original image that I took on the camera. So then 20% of it, the mood, the atmosphere that I made was in part of the post-processing. But yeah, the majority of the lighting that you see in the picture is the actual scene. But, but, it, but it's interesting because when you see it with your eyes, you cannot see it like this. That's yeah. the tricky part too. Yes. Is it the bit where you almost have to sort of squint to see? No, 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 no. So you see, because... Our eyes is so powerful, Mark. So we we it, it generates it it processes all the shadows and highlights. Mm. But I know that when I want to get this type of results, so I'm going to have a, and I want to have a deeper, I mean shadows and deeper, I mean more darkness. So I have to play with my shutter speed, maybe one or two or three, sometimes three stops darker to get the shot. That that's the point. So if you want to go with that, um, yes. As a, so, certain times it's very important uh, because um, when you are shooting, uh, especially for these type of pictures. So the time that I'm working is that you have a very good light in a whole day. It's sometimes between from it's sometimes from between end of. I mean, mid-October to, <clears throat> uh, let's say, mid-February. Mm -hmm. But the project was in April and May. So I had yeah. to yeah, uh, go out so early, like 
six, seven, sometimes eight. But after eight thirty or nine, so I I couldn't catch these type of lights. And specific for this picture, as I said, most of the people ask me that if this is a staged. No, I I had to wait. I I took so many shots here in this spot, so it it, it was not like that. I went there, I waited. Someone came in and I took one shot and that's it. No, it didn't, it didn't work like that. So I had to wait for the character that I wanted to make this picture to come into my scene. Yes. So the, the quote uh, shown with the image there mentions you drawing some sketches. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Daisy uh, saying that you talk a lot about image planning. What sort of exercises do you do when you plan? What's your sort of planning process? Um, so the the planning process it it all starts about the concept so if i can say that maybe i'm i'm not getting the, i'm not sure if i'm getting it right but i'm going to explain it that how i'm going to do it so something comes to your mind some some idea comes to your mind and you think about it and you write it down and you go out and explore and take some pictures do some sketches on the paper and when i'm saying sketches I'm not talking about a beautiful painting. Uh, you just to draw some lines. Okay, there's a light here. Okay, I need some people in the right side. Uh, if I want to have a people who's sitting on the, in the middle of the street or in a chair, then I'm going to explore um, the parks, um, the streets, the restaurants that they have, and outdoor dining. There are so different locations in New York City that you can explore. And then I'm start shooting uh, for a very specific picture that I wanted that I want to take. Um, uh, it's not processed yet, but there's a cons right now. There's a construction in Fifth Avenue, which I want five people walk into the streets, but and the t and the light should be on the left side. So I go out, um, calculate the timing. The sun rises. So it's going to be like between the, the light that I want. It's like between eight to nine, and I choose the angle. But it seems that when it goes further and further, maybe I need some cast to put in my pictures, because uh, controlling the behavior of the people on the streets is impossible, and the way that we act is unpredictable. So, yes, that's why I'm telling you you have to be sometimes lucky <laughs> I hope you, I answered the question the way they wanted I'm not sure if there's any specific question please ask again and I'm going to explain it for instance in this picture the steam on the ground they're real I didn't put the steam I didn't put those um, cloud like because sometimes the people think that I use the brushes no, it's not brushes in Photoshop. It's the actual steam. And I took the shot. As you can see, forms are very important for me, Mark. Lights are important for me. Uh, the, the, the gesture of people, the way they walk. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about all of them to make that picture happen. Signs, signs plays, sometimes plays a very important role in my pictures, as you can see. Uh, the color, um, yes, but this darkness and brightness, this, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's kind of a challenge, it's kind of a tension, and we have this tension in our everyday life, all of us, doesn't matter where we live, how we live, so this, this tension, especially these days, exists, yes. Do you, do you have a uh, let me tell you one thing, Mark, because I name 99% um, all of my images, 99.99, uh, 99. 99. Mm -hmm. I name them all. And this picture name is Hope. Mm -hmm. And you can see uh, the sign which says wrong way in the back. But yeah. the guy is looking in the horizon with a very specific light in his body and face. So this shot was one of those spontaneous. Uh, yeah, I plan to take pictures in the spot, but 
this was not the picture that I wanted to take. But this worker came into the streets, and I was on, the, on that side of the, the street, and I uh, took the picture. I was lucky that uh, have his face looking at the. I'm not sure he was looking at the <laughs> lights. Maybe he was uh, looking for the car who was coming in. But hmm. but as I said, this is a one frame. And we don't know what happens outside of the picture. And that is good for the people to read the photograph in a way they want it. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of sometimes when I'm talking about the picture, it's kind of cinematic, but maybe because I love cinema and uh, <laughs> that's why I like to take this type of pictures. Do you ever get approached to the, by people that have uh, realized that you've taken photos of them? Not usually because, no, I'm, yeah, it was one time in Times Square, yes, which the lady was so angry, I don't know why, but he told me that you took my pictures, you want to sell it, and um, started to say, hey, no, okay, you want me to delete this picture, okay, because, um, I mean, the lady was a little angry, and I didn't want to get into trouble, and um, of course, it was not a trouble, but Sometimes when you interact with interact with people, you don't want to uh, continue uh, the argument. I say if you're not comfortable, that's it. Okay, bye. I can take pictures again. So in a different way. <laughs> uh, yeah. That that was the only time. But one thing was in, interesting on in the master's book because the H five D was so big, it was like a tank in your hand. <laughs> it was like a gun you want to shoot people. So. Uh, People started to staring at me. That was um, the time that I was not very comfortable. And uh, it wasn't good for me because I didn't want that. So it was so hard for me to stay in the dark. When I'm saying stay in the dark, it means that I wanted to not have the attention of the people. That's what I'm saying. Right. Which the X1D, uh, thank God, solved it for me. I mean, when you have the X1D in your hand, no one pays attention to you. I mean, it's a very lightweight, small, and it's one of the features of X1D for me, at least when I'm going out. So yeah, that's fascinating for me. So, okay. Yes. So I think this next series of images are now going to be the, the images you shot with the X1D. Yes, this is the in the dark. Yeah, the in the dark of the project. Um, for for um, uh, Mark, let me tell you one thing before I jump into the In the Dark of Day project. In the Dark of Day project, I started many years ago. It was in 2013, seven years ago. And I didn't start it at Hasselblad because at that time I didn't own the camera. Mm -hmm. So especially this particular series for me, which is very personal, it's about... Uh, this, this is the theme that I tried to add into the master's book with a little different because the harshness of the shadows here is too much. I mean, you can completely see that that my images separates into darkness and brightness, darkness and light, which I think uh, it's, it's the inner dark of day is, is a concern about the balance. It's the tension between the shadows and lights in our everyday life. These two aspects. I mean, the darkness and light as concur our, our, our world uh, from the beginning <laughs> till now. And, and um, we, I believe that we have to face the darkness. So uh, we, don't, we don't want to run from it. We have to face the darkness. And as I, you know what, I'm not, um, most of the time, uh, I don't believe in a statement but sometimes you need to put some statement for your photographs because um, uh, if you want to grow, if you want to move forward, only a true searcher can find the answer. So this is this is about these two aspects in our life. X1D was very important for me on this project. First, um, as I mentioned, it's the way that camera designed and produced, um, which I love it. As a photographer, I work with many cameras, different cameras, different brands. And uh, but when you handle it, when you have it in your hands, it completely fits and gives you the ability 
because it's a, it's so lightweight uh, and it's not visible for people, I jump in the middle of the street in, in front of the people and, and taking the pictures. And after that, the quality that it produced, Mark, uh, is important for me. Uh, maybe people tell me that maybe different brands have certain amount of quality as well, which I cannot ignore, which I cannot say they don't have. But when you are working with a Hasselblad, when you are working, when you want to level up, you raise your bar, uh, this is not the money you're spending on a camera like Hasselblad. This is a, an invest in your art career. So mm -hmm. I see it as an inv investment more. Uh, all of us, um, maybe sometimes people ask that, uh, because when X1D promoted, produced in 2016 the quote was it is a game changer mm, yeah the, 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 yeah the, it was a game but but the point is mark uh what is a definition of x of game changer that's very important in my idea game changer is a thing or a person that can help you and save you in a certain moment that no one can and x1d does it, it, the x1d is the, is a tool that can help you on that time based in terms of producing a high quality images. Because for me, big pictures, I mean, size is always important to me more. So 50 pixel, 50 megapixel, I'm sorry, 50 megapixel with that high dynamic range um, is, is, is phenomenal. I don't want to create a small pictures. My pictures should always man maintain their integrity as large pieces. That's why I'm switching. I switched to medium format, especially Hasselblad. Um, we are not talking about the brands, but this is a Hasselblad event, so that's um, that's why I'm mentioning the name. And uh, I'm a Hasselblad master, so. <laughs> uh, but but the point is, it's the truth. Yeah. When you compare them with the other images, so this picture again. So the name is "Face the Darkness" of this picture, and uh, one ray of light one people one person in in the middle of darkness and uh so i don't want to be i don't in these days especially i want to talk about the hope that's why uh, we have these pictures because even one ray of light can shatter the dark mark it can mm -hmm. shatter the dark even one ray of light so that that's that's the whole story Oh, when we talk uh, before about this picture, you feel that it was like a surface of moon. Yeah, it reminded yeah. <laughs> me of the, of the American flag on the moon shot. Yes, yeah, the American flag That's on that. the moon. Yeah, that was interesting because when you saw it, because uh, that was not my intention when I took the picture. I just wanted to play with the light and the, the, the objects that I had in the streets. Uh, one particular thing, Mark, when I'm taking pictures with x1d is playing with the shadows when i want if i want to talk about the technical parts of creating uh shadows i mean playing with shadows for me is very important especially to not producing the noise mm. when, I, when i grab the sliders in camera raw or lightroom so i'm in total confident that the picture that i'm producing um fulfill the expectations of my artistic vision as a photographer when I'm tech because uh, uh, everybody who know know me from many years ago I'm, I'm a person who believes in both ideas and tools and the combination of these two the concept ideas and the tools ideas and tools um, gives you a better opportunity to make better high quality and more uh understandable pictures or if i want to use the right word uh the picture beside the technical side it is a picture that uh, that that speak to the audience add something add something i always try to add something with my pictures even a small part uh in yeah. in, in the other world 
So we've got a few questions um, sure. asking what your favorite and preferred lenses are for street photography. So what lenses do you have for the X1D? Um, for the street, um, um, in, in Hasselblad, it's going to be 45 millimeter, which translates in DSLR to 35. Yep. So 35 fixed lenses, 35, it's, it's a very good lens to me, but um, I didn't have the chance to use the just... I didn't have the chance to use the 35 to 75 in Hasselblad. It's like 28 to 60 in the SLRs. Mm -hmm. It's like 24 to 70. If I want to use the zoom lenses, it's going to be 24 to 70, but the fix is 35. But it's all about your project. It's all about your vision. That vision, that concept, concept dictates you what tools you have to use. And this is the time that knowledge helps you when you know the lenses, when you know the, your equipments, when you know the capabilities of your camera and lenses, then you go out with a full confidence to take, to take and make the picture that you want, to make the picture that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, this picture uh, is uh, it's kind of a typical picture. I really uh, wanted to have the picture in the series uh, it's the mood of New York City, uh, and it reminds me of this. This is one of the pictures that was in my subconscious. I can guarantee that. Um, it reminds me of the 70s and 80s, the streets of New York City, and 70s and 80s. And maybe you see this type of scenes, not exactly in the movies, and uh, the steam that comes out from the streets and the people who is walking. That feeling, I wanted to 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 share that feeling with the people. And um, yes, an X1D, as I said, plays a very important role. If you go, can you come back for on the picture, Mark? Yeah, sorry, yeah. So if you see that people is walking uh, beside me without noticing, you don't see the faces. But when I was taking pictures, they don't even care. Yeah, it's not that it's, um... huge camera. Is not seeing the faces um, also like a, a benefit? Is there any ever any issue with people's faces appearing in your? Yes, yes, N not for the project, but mm. uh, if you go back, I mean, I'm not sure if we can do it, but uh, there's yeah. a problem. Yeah, in terms of copyright, if you want to go back, yeah. back, back to the uh, bliss picture of the the cafe. Oh, the cafe. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the cafe. Yeah. If it is possible, if not. This one. Okay. This one. The problem was, yeah, in terms of because if you want to do a commercial, if you want to uh, use it, this, use the picture as a commercial, so photographers should know that faces of people uh, can be a trouble if they want to uh, license the picture for a commercial project or, no, I'm not talking about the books, prints, or, or doing a gallery which is a completely different world. Mm -hmm. But the face of the pictures can be a problem because they can sue you. They mm -hmm. can say, hey, uh, you, you're using our faces to, to sell the pictures. And just a long story behind it, which I don't think we have time, but the, sometimes, yes, the faces of people in your pictures can be a problem, even, even the space that you are taking pictures, even the cafe. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in the in the dark of the project, no, it's not because the concept of the uh, series, uh, the the way I'm, that I'm taking the pictures usually hides the faces of people. Mm. Yeah. So, and if sometimes uh, I have a little lights on the faces, I can play it on post processing. Yeah. Okay. So this is the last uh, set of images we're going to have a look at today. Yes, uh, the pictures that I took uh, with X1D and Encounter Series. Uh, Mark, this is about a daily life in New York City uh, at the time of winter. Uh, the, the, the snow is beautiful and silent. Um, I mean, um, the season is uh, fantastic. I love uh, winter, but... Um, it puts, I mean, when the blizzard is coming to New York City, it, it, it's, and it confronts the people. So, 
everything changed for the people because the essence of New York City is unstoppable, but the nature wants to stop you. That's a challenge between the people and the nature and people come out. And this is the time that I really like to capture this everyday life. People enjoy their everyday life, even the snow, even in the cold. And uh, there are different pictures that I take. But this project, um, I know when you start a project, you should finish it. But uh, honestly, this project is an ongoing because my project is directly related to the blizzards that's coming to New York City. And we have um, a global warming issue uh, last year in 2000. Even this year, 2020, 2019, even on 2018, uh, especially 2019, 2020, we didn't have that type of blizzards that we usually have in the uh, December and January in New York City. So, um, yes, the people, the forms, the colors, uh, and this is the way that I want to take the pictures. X1D, uh, it's interesting. Uh, Mark, in this particular image, I use the XH adapter for the X1. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it's very important for people to know when you buy an X series, when you have an X series in your camera bag. So you have many different options of lenses, but by adding an XH adapter, which on that time I really needed because I really needed a zoom lens on that time. You can add the whole series of edge in your uh, um, um, tools. Yep. Now you can rent them. I don't want to say you have to buy all of them. You can rent them and, and use yep. them with the XH adapter, which on that time it was 50 to 110 millimeter, if I'm not wrong. 50 to 110. Yes. Yep. Yes. Edge series that are excellent quality, um, fantastic performance. Um, and 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 I have to mention that, and, and people should know that um, we don't expect the, the X1D, the Hasselblad cameras. In some cases, or in most of the cases, they are not for even if you can use it, but they are not for sport photography or action photography. So mm -hmm. You don't, you don't, you can use it if you want, and they have the capabilities but if you want to compare them that's a different story which i don't want to get into yeah okay so last couple of images yes um as i said um it was sometimes i'm looking for uh an isolated remote street with no people in it and i like to take pictures of the objects and the walls and uh, there's a there's a very very long story about me and the walls and rectangles. It's my favorite shape, and rectangles. <laughs> so which 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 reminds me of stability. Uh, yeah, sometimes I look for the walls and the silent uh, on the streets of New York, especially in the um, um, snow time. And I, I, I put the name an encounter because it, it really is. Uh, it's, it's the conference of the people and, and uh, everything stopped as you can see. So the machines are stopped. And the last, this is the last picture I think, Mark. Yes, is it is, yeah. So the, yeah, the last picture, um, let me give you a piece of advice. When you jump in the middle of the street, be careful. <laughs> Because <laughs> as you yeah, because as you can see, uh, I'm standing exactly in a way that the light is green, and there are lots of cars are behind me. So, and I I'm 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 fascinated. I'm I love to take pictures uh, when my uh, uh, when the people when the objects when the subjects everything that I want to take capture them. Uh, be in front of my camera with a uh, very direct angle and uh, sometimes I have to jump into the middle of the streets to take the pictures so take care guys <laughs> <laughs> so if there's okay. any specific question I like to answer um, 
if there is if not so that's a different story yeah, we've got a few questions yeah if you don't mind so um oh, sure, sure. a question from mira uh, do you use any lens filters like polarizers or nd filters at all for now no 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 i'm not using any uh, filters on my cameras just um uv filters on the lenses kind of a protection of the lens and uh, no i'm not using uh, but uh i have a um there's something in my mind because i want to add, add some drama or different styles into the pictures uh definitely in future i'm going to use the nd filters okay uh, yeah nd filters if because on this third or four images on the introduction there's a taxi that which i used uh in nd filters but it was one time but yeah i have the plan to use the nd filters on my new images yes but for nano okay um a question uh, from hey mohammed <laughs> how's it going hey, sorry. no and mark when you finish that question i have a couple of questions uh yeah, for yeah, as well. go for it. yeah go for it yep um thank you ali that was really insightful and 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 I love, um, you know, I was actually going to ask you about cinema um, influencing your work, and you 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 kind of answered that for me. But what I did want to ask you is, um, your work is 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 excellent. And I'm wondering if you've been able to kind of use this work, um, any of the series that you showed, to pitch it to um, commercial clients to be able to kind of monetize that and get um, to get work, because you know. Uh, uh, um, photography is great and it's a, a passion for a lot of people it'd be nice to get a little bit of a change so you can upgrade your lenses and kit but uh, have you been able so to do that uh, let me tell you one thing uh mohammed it's all about it's beside the art uh at, at, at the same time that the art is uh important for all of us the money in the business is at the same level and it's equal to the art so the art of business i can say <laughs> um my intention right now is to working with the galleries and um, uh, private collectors. But if I want to, if somebody, so th there's one um, important point here, because if I want to have them in a commercial world, then I have to prepare lots of things to take the pictures, like the model releases, if I want to use, if I want to use models, talent releases, uh, property releases, it's very important for you. That's why it's very important for you to know when and where and how you want to make that photograph. But if I have a picture, uh, especially on the cafe that you are seeing it right now, um, and it's interesting because I took the picture, my intention was not to use this picture for a commercial work. So when Hasselblad and IKEA told me that they want this picture, I told them that there's a problem with the face of the lady that we have. And I went there and I found the girl at the lady I'm in. Mean. Uh, yeah, it was so hard because she, on that time, um, she was not there. I started searching and I found her on Facebook. Some of her friends uh, gave me his Facebook page. I contacted her. And she was fine with the signing of a model release. But the second time or third time I contacted her, she didn't respond to me anymore. So I had two options to give up on uh, cooperation with IKEA, or I have a solution which post processing helped me here. But before that, I told the IKEA and Hasselblad the problem. I told them, hey, I cannot get the uh, model release of the lady. So either you have to choose another image or you should drop me or you have to drop me out of the uh, your plan. Or you can allow me to take. To uh, composite a new image, a new face into the photograph that no one can understand. That's the time this skill comes and help you. So on this exact spot, the same light, I photographed a model and put it on the picture. So the picture that you're seeing me right now in the back, it's not visible, but the face is different on the picture that you're seeing right now. So that's why that's that's the post processing helped me and saved me and helped me to make some money. Good save. 
Uh, uh, yeah, thanks, Ali. I'll, I'll pass it on to Mark, and then if there's time, yes, I, I have sure. another question. Sure. Okay. Well, actually, Mohammed, uh, if you stick around for a second, because um, we've had a message uh, across. Sorry, a question from John uh, asking uh, about the benefits of medium uh, format uh, in street photography, and I think you've covered some of it already with like resolution and that. So maybe for Mohammed, is there? Do you notice a difference uh, with printing medium format images against full frame? A hundred percent. I think um, you know we have a print lab at GPP, and um, and and you know. Uh, people who want big prints medium format there's no comparison and um you know we, we see it and, and and sometimes people will send us an image and it's a beautiful image it'd be like i'd like to print this at you know 1.5 meters wide and we're like uh you know but i think uh, w w w when you have more dots with, with that you do with the x1d for example it makes a huge huge difference and i think ali can testify to that as well i mean um <clears throat> Of and not only we, the, the, the dots, but I think there's also there's there, there's a clarity and like a um, you know a, a texture or sharpness that medium format brings that it's hard to kind of explain over you know over an online um, webinar call. But I think when you see it, and you know uh, if you're based in Dubai, come on down to our, our our print lab and you can see it. But Ali can tell you, having worked with these files and with his experience with Photoshop, that you know it's unparalleled the the difference that you get from um, a, a print at a decent size where you can see that difference? Um, unfortunately, I have to say to everyone who is watching us right now that Instagram and Facebook are not the right platforms to discover a photo. So printing is a whole different level, is a whole different world when, when it comes to print a picture. And a medium format camera plays a very important role in terms of quality and size. Um, and it depends on your expectations. I don't want to say that everybody should buy at, I don't know, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 5,000 uh, camera to uh, have the quality. But at the same time, because it, it depends on the size of the prints that you want to do, the way you want to uh, 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 print it, but when you have it in action, definitely when you see the prints, uh, because I sell my prints, uh, I sell my prints. If you want to check it, you can a rajabi.com on my website, and you can. And when I'm using, because I'm using the archival print uh, papers, which is a museum quality, and it completely, it it completely different. And um, it's about your expectations. It's about your goals. It's about um, raising your levels. And I have to mention for everyone, with the, with the price that Hasselblad X1D Mark II right now offers, I know it's not cheap. I know that. But it's achievable. Yes. Um, uh, and you can also go and check out the camera um, and, and kind of, you know, get a demo from the guys at Advanced Media. And, and I love that it's so small. And, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and Ali, that, that, that brings me to my question, maybe the last question, if Mark will allow me. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, a lot yeah. of your photography, um, you know, you can tell that you haven't just gone there and kind of propped up and, and like made these pictures. You've been very patient. You probably waited, probably froze to death in the winter. Um, but, you know, and, and I think, uh, you know, with, with this X1D2, it allows you to kind of, um, you know, not have to worry so much about waiting and, and, and kind of, you know, just or pose for the, the, the you know, be, be ready for that shot when the person passes the light. Or um, So tell me a little bit about that. And also the other question is, do you use manual focus, for example, when you're sh shooting sometimes when you, when, you know, when you're at F8, do you have enough light? Uh, so those are two questions that I had. Yeah, that's, yeah, X1D first, X1D put me in, in, in the dark, that, no, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm invisible to people. That's one of the advantages if I want to confer. Uh, there are cert certain amounts of other, I mean, uh, other cameras that is a small, lightweight, but in not a medium format world. You're talking about the medium world. Uh, but um, what was your second? I'm sorry, I, I just forgot your second question. Um, manual focus. It, oh, it, manual do you focus. use that? Well, it depends, okay. Mohammed. It depends. It depends on. Yes, sometimes it happened to me, um, especially nighttime. Sometimes it happened to me, but the but the majority of pictures that I'm taking is out of focus. But but it depends. It depends. Yeah, most of the most of them are out of focus. But sometimes manual focus helped me a lot. But I can say because especially in X1D Mark II, the autofocus feature is a way different 
of the first version that I can um, admit that faster, better, and 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 uh, it helped me a lot in the streets. Yes. Thank you. I hope I answered your question. No, for sure. Okay, I think that's a, a great um, point to, to end on. And so just wanted to thank again our partners uh, for today's webinar. Uh, so Mohammed, uh, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, Timothy, I'm not sure if you're, are you still there, Timothy? Yes, sir. So I also just want to add something. So as uh, Mohammed Samji added earlier, so advancing his doors are open if you would like to try, ask technical things about puzzle blood or um, equipments for video or photos. We're open to help you out and very grateful to do that. And again, um, in band for advanced media, we thank you all for joining this webinar. Great. Thank you very much, Timothy. Thanks for joining us. And of course, thank can you I to add, Ali. Mark, can I add something at the end? Yeah, sure. So uh, um, for me, um, uh, photography is um, solitary action. So that you rely on your uh, conscious instincts, experiences, and you are the one who make the final image. And um, I always say that um, it was a very, it is a very interesting quote that says, it's what you do in the dark that puts you in the light. <laughs> right, yeah, fantastic. So thanks again, Ali. Uh, thank thanks you everyone for joining us. <laughs> okay, and uh, hopefully you, we'll see you all again soon. So I just got um, a couple more slides. Um, you'll receive a, uh, when you log out of GoToWebinar, you'll see um, uh, a window pop up with regards to a webinar uh, survey. If you could be so kind to help us uh, fill that in, it's, it's great to get your feedback and to let us know what we'd like us to do for you in the future. Uh, once again, just to remind you that um, our past webinars and include this, uh, and indeed this one, will also be on our YouTube uh, channel within a few hours or tomorrow morning. So please check it out on there. And of course, for anything Hasselblad, uh, go to Hasselblad.com, where we've got lots of information on our events, products, our partner network, uh, lots of inspiration with lots of stories, lots about Hasselblad's history. Um, you can, of course, um, request a demo if you'd like one and um, ask for any support. So there we have it. Thanks for joining us and uh, we hope to see you again next time. Thank you very much.